Hello, my name's Christopher, and today I'm going to show you how to install Tandor on Dockage. So, a little bit about this series, I'm going over a home lab, so installing things, getting things set up, everything like that. So, if you're interested in that, subscribe, comment, like, and support the channel, and let's get started. I wanted to let y'all know about the Big Bear community. We just launched a uh, community on community.bigbeartechworld.com. It's based on Discourse, so go on there, join it, and uh, say hi. So. Let's get back to your registered programming. So this is what I'll be installing today. Um, Tandor, it's managed recipes, planning meals, building shopping list, and much more. Um, here's a screenshot of it. And uh, here's some core features. Manage recipes, plan, shopping list, cookbooks, share and collaborate. And here's some more features and almost halves. So that's what we will be installing today. So now I'll be starting on Big Bear Video Assets. And there will be a link down in the YouTube description to get to this. And it'll be in the useful link section. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and go to the search and type Tandor. And now you see how to install Tandor on Dockage. I'm going to go down here to the Docker Compose one right here. So now we're in Big Bear Video Assets, how to install Tandor on Dockage, and then the Docker Impose. So version 3.8 of Docker Impose is being used. I'm going to set some services, and then the first service underneath the services is called Big Bear Tandor. And this is the service name. And then I'm going to name the container Big Bear Tandor. This is so Docker doesn't have to generate a random name. And the image is coming off of GitHub because the ghcr.io right here. And um, then the Docker image, and then the Docker image tag. Restart unless stop. So that means you st if you stop it for any reason, it will not try to restart. But if it fails any other reason, then we'll try to restart. And then I'm going to set some volumes. So Big Bear Tandor static files. That's a local volume that's defined down the bottom. And then on the container side is opt recipes stack uh, static files. And then the same thing I got goes for this one, the host side and the right side is a container. Do not change the right side container path at all. And then now I'm going to set some ports. So 8080 on the host and 8080 on the container. Do not change the container side. But if this does collide with another port on your host on the left side, then you can change it. You can cha change the left side right here. So now environment variables. So the secret key, you can generate your own secret key. And this is using a UID V4. And you know it's V4 because the four digit right here. So the four number. And then now the DB engine is to Django DB backends Postgres QL. And then the Postgres host is Big Bear Tandor DB. That's the service name that's found down here. And then now I'm going to set the Postgres port at 5432. And then the Postgres user is Tandor. The Postgres password is um, down here as well. And then the Postgres DB. So all these environment variables is it, it, going to be able to connect to this service right here and store all the Tandor, uh, uh, the data inside of this service right here. So these environment variables should align with these environment variables up here and then now the network is big bear tandor network and that's down in the bottom it's defined and then the health check configuration uh, it's good using it depends on and it's dep depending on the big bear tandor db and the condition the service is healthy so now i'm going to go down here to the service big bear tandor db that's the service name the image is coming off of Docker by default because there's no year before this. Postgres is the Docker image. And then 15 Alpine is the Docker image tag. And then now I'm going to set a name of Big Bear Tandor DB. The, and this is so Docker doesn't have to generate a random name. And then the volume, so Big Bear Tandor Postgres QL data. And that's defined down the bottom. And then on the container side, it's var lib Postgres QL data. Do not change the container side. And then now environment variables and the restart policy is on the stop. So that means if you stop it for any reason, it will not try to restart. But if it fails any other reason, they don't try to restart. 
And then I'm gonna put this in the same exact network that this one's in up here. And this is so we can use the service name in Postgres host right here, of right here. So um, now I'm going to put a health check on it. And that so uh, the, uh, the depends on can hopefully go service healthy. And then um, I'm gonna set the network down here. So Big Bear Tandor network. And then I'm gonna define the volumes. So Big Bear Tandor static files, Big Bear T uh, Tandor media files, and Big Bear Tandor PostgreSQL data. And those were up here. And um, the other one was down here. So I'm gonna go up here to copy your all file. I'm gonna click it. Then I'm gonna go over to, over to my dockage and get this installed. So I wanted to let you know uh, about the Big Bear Club. Uh, 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 you can join it and it greatly supports this channel and I very much appreciate it. So uh, if you'd like to join the Big Bear Club, you can go down the YouTube description and uh, go to my Ko-Fi link and join it from there. So let's get back to registered programming. So now I'm gonna start on my dockage. I'm gonna go to compose and then I'm gonna put the stack name as Tandor um, stack. And then now I'm going to come over here to the editor and I'm gonna paste in the Docker Compose that I explained over in Bigger Video Assets. So now once that's done, you're gonna say deploy up here and it's going to uh, download the Docker image off the registries, get them extracted, get them up with Docker Compose underneath. And also it's gonna uh, set up the network, the volumes and the containers. This, this is using the Docker engine underneath. So now it's uh, setting up the migrations and migrating everything. And also it's going to have to go and uh, generate the static files, which is gonna take uh, a little bit. So um, I'm going to probably pause it right here and wait till this is actually all done. So after waiting a little bit, um, it created the static files and it copied them and it said done. So it, it is up and running. So now I'm gonna go over the options in the Dockage UI. So on the home page, you'll see active, exited, and inactive. These are the statuses of your stacks over here. Um, if you go in the stack, you can see actions up here, edit, restart, update, stop, and then stop and inactive, and then delete. You can see the containers that are running and Big Bear Tandor and Big Bear Tandor DB. If you want to go to the UI, you can click here on the port. Um, you can go inside the container and switch to SH. There we go. And you can do the same thing with the DB side too. And um, you can also switch to SH. Um, so you can see that they're both healthy and running. You can see logs down here. This is great for debugging. And um, you can go over here and see a read-only version of the Docker Compose. If you want to edit this Docker Compose, you can go up to the edit button right here and um, you can edit the Docker Compose over here in the editor and it'll sync uh, back and forth and vice versa on the UI right here. So if I add another service underneath the services like Nginx, um, you can see I did add it right here and you can see it's added right here. So that's a quicker way of adding a service. And then you can go ahead and you can add an image here and you can see it did sync with the editor over here. Um, I'm gonna delete this. So you can edit each service by clicking edit and you can edit right here. You can also delete it. You can also um, add URLs. You can set environment variables. You can change the networks and uh, internal and external. Um, you can deploy the changes, you can save the changes, stop an inactive, and then discard the changes. I'm going to discard them. So, that's a little bit about Dockage UI. So now I'm going to go in the UI. So, if you go here on the port, you click it, you'll go to the UI. So you can put a username in, and then a password in, and uh, you're going to confirm the password. So you're gonna put a username in and then a password and then you're gonna go uh, confirm this password right here and put it in again. So I'm gonna create a super user account. And then now I'm gonna put that same exact info in here. So now once you do that, you're going to sign in. And now you have uh, two options, join a space or create a space. 
I'm going to create a space. So you can import and you can create. You can also search and have advanced searching right here. Um, you can create and you can create a new a, re a recipe right here. I'm going to say testing. Then now a, uh, a, a name, description, uh, image, preparation time, waiting time, servings, servings text, keywords, and you can set properties of steps. You can add another step here. So that's pretty cool. Um, I'm going to exit out of there. So you can see it right here and you can go into it and you can put a comment, a preparation, waiting and servings. Um, you can go into meal plan, you can create, and then an auto planner, uh, you can export and then a set settings. So a, co a cosmetic account and then search and then the shopping list and then the meal plan and then an API. Um, so if you go over here to shopping, sh shopping list, our recipes, supermarkets, and then, um, you can share. So if you go in here and you just type something in, then you press it. There we go. And then, so now it's, uh, in there. So n now you can just check a check market if you'd like, go back in here. And then you can, you have to double tap this button for some reason. Um, so if you go into here, you can see quick actions. And um, you can see books over here. So plus button, you can do a new cookbook right here. And then you can edit it. And then the tables of content. You can go over here, keyword, foods, units, supermarkets, supermarket categories, automations, files, batch edit, history, ingredient editor, export, properties, and unit conversion. You can also import a recipe and create one over here. So settings, external recipes, space set, uh, settings, external connectors, system, admin, the admin space, the overview, so if you go into overview, that's the same exact screen we started on. So that's a little bit about Tandor's UI. So I just went step by step on getting Tandor running on dockage. If you like this tutorial, subscribe, comment, like, and support the channel. And if you have any video suggestions or any community support, you can go to the Big Bear community and join our forum. There's a link in the YouTube description. So stay tuned for more.